Hey guys, what's up? By Sectatron here from One Half Gazette here with the next video. And today we're talking about that update that you guys may have heard about. Um, it is a significant balancing update as well as some new features. Um, I'm gonna cover a lot of stuff in this video, but I'm also gonna make some more specific videos. So if you're not subscribed or something, be sure to make sure that you are because um, there'll be some more videos coming out telling you guys how to take advantage of the new stuff in the update. Um, but this one, we're basically gonna be covering um, the, ba the balancing changes, the impact that's gonna have, how you're gonna wanna change your base building, just all kinds of consideration, especially for war at Town Hall 10, 11, 12, those important Town Hall levels. Um, and then we're also gonna talk um, about you know some of the new things like the tornado trap and just kind of give you guys a comprehensive look into how this update's gonna affect clan wars. Um, so let's get right into it. I'm gonna be going through pretty much each one by one, then we'll talk a little bit at the end here, but I have some nice uh, replays in the background from a war, just a random spin against HB. Um, so getting started here, offensively, uh, there's really only one change, and I, I'm gonna ignore all the stupid gem uh, changes. I mean, if you guys can gem people troops now uh, easier, good for you, but that's not really what many people care about. So starting with the witch, hit points are reduced from 320 to 300 at level 1. Um, so I don't think level 1 witches are used because once you get them, you can max them to level 2. Um, at level 2, they're also reducing it by 40, so even more, 360 to 320, as well as DPS goes down from 120 to 110, a small change, but um, witches were buffed not too long ago, so this is nerfing them back down, and I think that's going to really um, put an end to what was already kind of a dying era of witch, frozen witch, uh, bow witch, just these types of witch attacks um, were still used at Town Hall 10, Town Hall 11 sparingly, but I think this will kind of help put an end to them being in the meta. We'll see them occasionally, but it's not going to be one of those go-to attacks like it has been for a little while now. Um, another change, switching over to defenses. This is probably the biggest one in the whole update, in my opinion. A third Inferno Tower is being added to Town Hall 12. You have three Infernos. Um, that's just crazy to think about. It's definitely going to bring down those 12v12 hit rates, which I'm a huge fan of. Um, it's going to make the wars a lot different for CWL. Um, people have been wondering, okay, are we going to start seeing anti-2 bases again? And I would say maybe. I think people are going to be very cautious to switch to an anti-2 and then get like face rolled by a, a Town Hall 12 uh, for 12v12 attacks to get the 3-star, but... Um, it's definitely going to make it harder for a Town Hall 10 to double, especially if the base is set up to defend that. We might see Town Hall 11s um, being responsible for two-starring the 12s, and then maybe one or two 12v12 attempts. But um, there will always be 12v12 attempts if there's leftover attacks. So it really depends how Town Hall 11 and Town Hall 10 change. Um, and if the 11s are cleared uh, as easy as they are being right now, um, we're still going to have tons of 12v12 attempts. So um, it's not the difficulty at Town Hall 12 that matters. It's kind of the difficulty of the Town Hall levels below it in terms of how many attempts there are. But the hit rate, the success rate, is definitely going down for Town Hall 12. I think it's going to be very difficult to 3-star um, with that third Inferno. But I think it'll still be doable against the right base with the right army. Um, in terms of how people are going to use it, I think we're going to see more multi-Infernos. Uh, maybe have one single to kind of block the wall wrecker going uh, the typical route from opposite side of the town hall, but then also two back end multis on different sides, sides of the base. I think that's gonna be the meta. That's how you're gonna to wanna to use them. Uh, my initial impression, I don't think a bunch of multis is necessarily the best thing to do because uh, you you open up for some mass attacks. Um, some Still some mass loon attacks can work and stuff. I would say uh, to go with two multis, one single, or one uh, single, or yeah, two and one, either way you can go. I'd be a little cautious of having uh, all three set to one type, just because um, you kind of want to spread out your, your cards, so to speak. You don't want to put everything in one basket there, because some attacks can still probably beat it if it's all the same. So I would diversify the... the uh, settings of your infernos and until we see how it's really playing out 
Um, expo damage has been adjusted. Pretty much every level it goes down by 10. So keep that in mind, I guess, for queen walks. Um, and just in general, makes it a little easier. Uh, and kind of balances out a little bit some of these defensive uh, buffs. This is like one of the, the few defensive nerfs. And I have no problem with it. I think, if anything, maybe Queen Walk's a little easier. Uh, because the Expos are often what, what do a significant amount of damage to her. But uh, besides that, just kind of overall everything uh, is affected pretty equally by that. Every attack strategy at each Town Hall level. Um, Eagle Artillery just basically has a 50 point increase in damage at each level and then the shockwave damage is slightly higher the shockwave if you don't know is like a small amount of splash damage it does within like a three tile radius the main damage being in like a 0.75 tile radius so it's very concentrated splash damage but it has a slight amount it does to an area around that in case you didn't know that um so th this is going to make the eagle just a little bit stronger which i'm a fan of the eagle I think should be a dominant force at Town Hall 11, Town Hall 12, and this is just going to make it a little bit more powerful, um, which will spread out evenly in how it affects pretty much uh, every attack strategy. Um, air defense, this is a, another change I like. Um, they're raising the hit points. Um, it is slight, uh, mostly, I think, level, and I'm, I'm not sure how which levels necessarily correspond to which Town Hall level. I kind of forget, but the top ones are basically being... Uh, they're adding anywhere from like uh, 30, then 70, then 110 hit points. So it really, the main thing is Town Hall 11 and especially Town Hall 12, those upper Town Hall levels. Air defenses are getting tankier, which will nerf La Loon a little bit, which I think is good because La Loon is kind of airing towards being more powerful, especially with these new strategies we're seeing with the Electro Dragons being cloned and all the stuff like that. Um, that's good. Also in that same line... Uh, red air bombs are the ones that do the splash damage that you guys are familiar with. They are, um, there's a new level at Town Hall 12, and reduced activation radius from 5 to 4 tiles make it a little bit harder for a lava pup to trigger them. I think that's actually a buff, um, because they'll be more focused on the balloons that actually come their way, less likely to be randomly triggered by a lava pup. And then, um, that's it. So... Those are the two changes to red air bombs. It's a little bit stronger, especially at Town Hall 12. Look at how that Inferno was ignored. That was kind of weird. Um, moving along, though, we have the regular small bombs. Um, new level to Town Hall 11. And tr shortened the delay from trigger to detonation, which was uh, 2 seconds. Now it's 1.5, so a little bit harder for wall breakers if you're still using those guys. And um, I guess makes it a little bit better at killing the troops that run past it. So not a big change there, but there's a new level. Um, so that's pretty much all the big changes that are going to affect Clan Wars. A lot of stuff I know. Um, let's try to kind of piece this together in terms of big picture here. Um, as I kind of touched on a little bit earlier in the video, um, which base we go into, number 16. Um, as I touched on earlier in the video, Town Hall 12 is going to be seriously impacted. It's going to be much more difficult to get those 12v12 3 stars. The difficulty level, I'm not exactly sure. I mean, there's already a lot of defensive stuff at Town Hall 12. So one more Inferno might not be as big as it sounds. But at the same time, we have not seen anything like that. Um, we've only seen two Infernos from Town Hall 10 from the very beginning up until here we are now. So I think that's going to be um, something atta uh, attackers aren't used to and something defenders are going to have to figure out how to use. Like I said, keep your Infernos first spread out. Don't give too much value from a kill squad or a Sui battle blimp or some kind of cloned battle blimp. Um, keep them spread out away from the Eagle, away from the Town Hall, and away from each other. And I'd say spread them out between multi and single. I'd say if I had to just kind of shoot from the hip here, I'd do... Uh, one single two multis but there's definitely lots of different uh, options you can explore around with um, but anyway for clan wars yeah we're gonna see cwl wars maybe only like one or maybe no 12v12 triples so really what's gonna happen it's gonna be a game of percentage perhaps at town hall 12 um, although i think there might still be one or two triples that decide a war 
it's just gonna be much more difficult. Um, Town Hall 11, we've seen it's getting a bit of a nerf, and before I forget, let me include the Tornado Trap. I kinda haven't put that uh, into the mix here, but it, it will have an impact, and I wanna talk about it a little bit before I forget. Um, the Tornado Trap is Town Hall 11, Town Hall 12, duration of between like six and 10 seconds. It spins the troops around, um, which is actually pretty significant. It's gonna have, a, I think, a big impact. I'm, I'm sorry I kind of glossed over that, but um, the main thing is our miners are not going to be affected by it, and anything can trigger it. So lava pups, if one lava pup is in the radius, um, which is like the same as like a skeleton spell, somewhere around that, um, the lava hound pup will trigger it, so it can kind of be wasted in that sense. But if you get like a kill squad or a big group of balloons or hogs in that uh, tornado trap, it's going to keep them there for a long time. So that's another defensive tool that's being added um, and that we're going to have to take into account. So if you include that, if you include a few of these um, uh, buffs to air defenses, eagle artillery, um, that Town Hall 11 is also seeing, it's going to be di more difficult to three-star at Town Hall 11, especially as base building starts to change to defend against this cloned Electro Dragon attack that I've been uh, talking about a little bit on the channel. So as all that happens, Town Hall 11 gets a little more difficult. Maybe we see more dips which means even less 12v12 attempts that are much harder to do. So like I said, maybe one, two 12v12s are gonna decide wars, at least at kind of the top level here. Um, now, having said that, uh, I think Town Hall 10 is not gonna be changed a whole lot. Most of these balancing changes were to 11 and 12. Town Hall 10 doesn't have that tornado trap, um, which is gonna be a big player in uh, base building, so that's not going to have an impact. We have just some small changes, but it goes both ways with the expo being changed as well. So I think the takeaways are top level. It's getting harder. The heyday of these super high, like 50% Town Hall 11 hit rates in like not much lower, like 40, 30% Town Hall 12 hit rates. That is all going to change. And I think that's for the best. Um, I'm, I'm very excited to see it be more difficult to three star at those top town hall levels. It makes it more fun, I think, more competitive, and um, I'm just interested to see how clans are gonna adapt to it. So thanks for watching. Um, I know it was hard to kind of cover everything in one video, so if I left something out, leave it in the comments below. Uh, one thing, in case you guys are wondering about the tornado trap, I'm probably gonna be covering it in uh, more videos once it comes out. I haven't had much time to actually test it myself, so, um, I, I'm going to be looking for it in war as soon as it comes out and how it's used. But I'd say, as I said right now, put it, if the update's out and you're watching this video, you should be putting it where kill squads, where big groups of balloons, big groups of hogs are going, middle of your base, somewhere where it can't be missed. And um, as long as it's not triggered by like a Sui battle blimp, that might be a strategy uh, to kind of trigger it early and then still get value from those troops even while they're in the tornado trap. I don't know. Um, there's a lot of theories here. We'll see how it plays out, but I will definitely be covering the update more as it comes out and as you guys get to experience it and as we get uh, replays of some of these great attackers and defenders kind of testing out all these new things. All right, now we're at the end of the video. Thanks for watching. Hope you guys liked it. Leave a comment and I'll see you guys later. Bisectatron out.